time to start building by far the most ridiculous and obscene and incredibly complicated thing I've ever built. The Monster Chopper. We've got our KTM 1190 producing 150, 160 horsepower. And we got two 46 inch Mickey Thompson tires here. Right now I'm at the stage where I set everything up in, an or in a pile on the floor and stare at it for a couple of hours and contemplate things. I have a few parts to play with here. These are hubs for a Toyota Tacoma. I got them because obviously they are the right bolt pattern for these wheels. Just as importantly, uh, it's all a very modular assembly that is bolt on. So I can just make a flange with this bolt pattern and then it'll all be removable and replaceable and serviceable and all of those things because clearly this thing is going to see many thousands of miles. Let's take it on the Rubicon. That would actually be really cool. Now the rear, the drive back here is going to be pretty simple. Um, just chain drive like a normal motorcycle except with a jack shaft because one, uh, I need to get out past this tire and it is, you know, considerably wider than the tire that was on the motorcycle, so the chain wouldn't line up. And two, I need uh, gear reduction. So I'm gonna go down, go for something like 25% so that we have also a top speed of 60, 70 miles an hour, which will probably be terrifying on this, uh, but that way we have plenty of torque for the wheels and the added weight. This thing's gonna be uh, chungus. A lot of places I could start. I could start in the middle, I could start building from the engine and then build outward. But I think a better plan, because it's gonna be a pretty hard part of the project, is to start with the single-sided swing arms. Here's our center point hub situation there. Uh, I think I'm gonna make it be kind of a sort of a triangle like this. And then kind of back down like that to the pivot point somewhere, I don't know, something like that with you know, some some trellising or whatever. That'll accomplish a couple of things. Actually, the pivot point's probably more likely to be here. Shock, something like that. And then uh, the seat would be on top of that, sort of. I think it makes sense to just kind of start with that. Um, I've built a single-sided swing arm before, so I have kind of an idea of how it's gonna go. <laughs> We have a few pieces of pipe pretending to be a swing arm, but you get the idea. Well, once again, we're out here at the scrap pile, this time to harvest some steel. This, uh, this roll cage thing from the project that wasn't last winter. I'm gonna just cut out some chunks of it because this is some good DOM inch and three quarter. Uh, and more importantly, it already has some bends in it at different angles. So I can kind of use those to play with some ideas on my single sided swing arm without having to bend up some good steel. Um, and this needs to be chopped up anyway because like it's not gonna be anything. It's just sitting out here. So repurposing things, it's what we do. <laughs> I love driving my monster truck to work, but at four miles to the gallon, I can't keep living this lifestyle anymore. The transition was hard from my monster truck to this highly fuel efficient VTEC powered machine. But on my way to work today, I got a code. 
That's why I use Carly. I always have my phone in my back pocket and it makes it super easy to check codes on the fly. This app is super easy. It has all the selections for like, I wanna say every single car. I've looked through this list and it is crazy how many cars this application works with. There's a ton of stuff. Battery monitoring system, live data, diagnostics. It can save you from some really bad situations if you know what I mean. It monitors your battery for 24 hours and lets you know the health of your battery. Moment of truth, the vehicle status is very bad. <laughs> let's see what it is. All right, it looks like all I gotta do is swap out an O2 sensor and we should be good to go. That's a lot easier than I was thinking. If this was a Subaru, it would be like, react immediately. All bearings have failed or something, so. This is smart mechanic mode, where it basically tells you like everything you would have to do to fix the problem. With generic code scanners, you'd have to search the internet, go on forums, and that takes a lot of time. But with Carly, it's really easy. It's all here, and it shows me exactly what I need to do to fix it. I saved so much with Carly, I can afford to drive the Mini Cooper again. Well, I Will used our link in the description to save 15% on his purchase of Carly, and he's excited about it, and you should be too. So check that out, and let's get back to it. A massive brake rotor. You see it right there? Uh, it may seem like an early stage for a brake rotor, but the way I'm gonna do it, it's gonna be bolted between the hub and the wheel, just like a full-size car. And then the plate that the swing arm's gonna mount to uh, is also gonna have the brake rotor, or the brake caliper mounts on it. So it's kind of a, you know, gotta start and work my way up the stack of stuff here. You can see my kind of mocked up pile of stuff, imagining where the sprocket's gonna be and all of that nonsense. how you make a brake rotor with a plasma cutter. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but um, that turned out rather nice. I put it in the mill to uh, because it's too big to fit on the lathe, and I put it on that there uh, spinning thing, dividing head. I spun it around and made sure that the outside is a perfect circle so that when the um, calipers are on here, they, they can go on, you know, all the way without having chunks that run into it, you know? So anyway, I did that and then the inside to make it fit on the hub perfectly. And then I tried to make it flat in this direction as well. You can see some of these kind of chunky bits here, um, but I found that it just vibrated too much because it's pretty thin and it was only gripped in the middle. So um, I gave up on that and it just, I, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's pretty close to flat already. I was just gonna try and make it perfect, but unnecessary. I have these. CBR 900 front brake calipers, and just in the name of massive overkill, I'm gonna use both calipers. 
They're meant to go on opposite sides on different rotors, but there's no real way to put two rotors on this. Uh, but what I can do is put two calipers on one rotor. That looks so cool. Yeah, I think it looks pretty, pretty sweet. So I'll kind of position them, you know, around something like that. And the reason I did all of this right now with the brake rotor is so that I can design the plate that this hub bolts to. What's that one for? Um, this is the plate that bolts to the hub here um, on the chopper. And it's gonna have, so these sets of bolts here are for the brake rotors. And then this set is for this to bolt to this. And then the rest of the extra space there is for these tubes to weld to for the swing arm. Nice. Yep. The last podcast is out. There's some concerned people. Oh. For you. <laughs> it says, Lord, please send Will as many angels he's going to need. I think my angel is pretty extreme. He's saved me from a lot of things. So, I, I mean, I'm not, I would, it'd be nice to have a couple more, but maybe mine's getting overworked. I don't know. <laughs> What did you say about your angel earlier? He probably drives a turbocharged Hayabusa <laughs> just to keep up. Maybe you need like two or three today. Oh. What? I've never been more excited for anything ever. Like, no Subaru can top this. This is way cooler. <laughs> Do Subarus actually still get you excited at this point? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> When I see a Subaru stew stew past me while I'm on the way to work, I'm like, oh. I see Will be in like the middle of a conversation, the middle of a story or something, and then just jaw on the floor and like turning his head and it's just some like random Subaru. <laughs> <laughs> it's never a random Subaru. Oh, uh, <laughs> would help if I um, plugged in the air and turned on the plasma cutter. That would um, that would help a lot. Time to cut out this plate that's going to be the basis of my hub, swing arm attachment, and brake rotor attachment. Beef. build where I'm not too worried about weight. Um, when each tire weighs like 200 pounds, a couple extra pounds of metal to make things beefy is uh, not really a problem. got my plate cut out here, but I need to make a little groove in it so it sits down over that little extra ring there. I'm not sure what that's for, but uh, should only take a minute or two on the mill here. Lot cut in there. So, let's see if I gotta say, I've never started a build inside of the wheel before. This is a new, uh, a new way to start a project. First step: build things inside the wheel. Yeah, you could fit a whole wheel inside there. Yes. We actually talked about that, like when these wheels showed up, I think. Yeah, before oh, they yeah. were mounted, we That's talked about great. putting you in one of the tires and rolling you down the hill. <laughs> well, I'm gonna need some longer bolts, but I think, let's see, how long of a bolt do I need specifically? 
two inches, exactly. That's interesting. I've uh, switched to a horizontal design and visualization stage of the process. Uh, meaning, <laughs> I laid the tires on the floor and I'm just laying out parts. If you stand up on a stool and look down on that, it kind of looks like a motorcycle. Now that I have that done, I can start building the swing arm. But before I build it, I need to figure out the pivot points at the other end. And it gets very complicated because I have to have a jack shaft. And I've thought about, there's a couple, there's two ways to do it basically. One is I have the jack shaft be concentric to the uh, suspension pivot. So they both pivot around the same, um, same shaft. But I've decided that that's actually more complicated than having separate pivots because um, if the pivots for the swing arm are separate, they can just be like a plastic bushing type pivot because they don't need high RPM. They just go And also just trying to fit all of that stuff onto one shaft with uh, a bunch of different bearings and carriers and it, it just gets very complicated to make the jack shaft. So I've decided to do it like a normal motorcycle is where you have a chain here slightly in front of your suspension pivot. It's also better for um, geometry because if you have them concentric, uh, it makes it squat. I won't get into the details. Basically, it pull, the, the top of the chain pulling on it kind of pulls the rear suspension up. I don't really care if that happens on this, but it's another reason. I'm gonna go ahead and put this tire on the fab table and see if I can get enough space to build the swing arm around it. Conveniently, inch and a half tubing fits perfectly inside inch and three quarter 120 wall BOM. So, these are my two pivots and I'm getting ready to jig it all up here and bolt it to the table. So, I'm using this to keep them obviously concentric and aligned and then I can space them up however much they need to be. Little ring on there that'll hold that at exactly the right height from the table. It's a cold as hell. The run down this man. Where the ocean lands. It's a tall sound. These ones I've just been using to as mock-up, but I don't have that much of the inch and three quarter uh, to work with. Um, it's but I have a ton of inch and a half, which is plenty strong. So uh, I'm gonna make this go. It's gonna do roughly this path, but it's also gonna have a little swoopy bend at the end here um, to get it a little bit closer to the tire. So. I like kind of like that. You know why 60 degrees is a nice number? Mm, triangles? Hexagons. Hexagons. Yes. I was on the right track. Yeah. You know what? I want to move that clamp block a little bit to extend the bend. Make it even like more of a, a wider radius, I think. Gone done for love. It's a pulse and shove. It's a sharpest cry. 
the head goes pretty wide Where the desperate lie Far from ever feeling lost with me I'll push you back towards Atlantic sea <laughs> what are the odds? That angle's like actually kind of this here, the cut that was on that. Oh wow. <laughs> that's pretty funny. It's actually that's pretty like, close to what it needs to be. That's like kind of remarkably close. Yeah. That's actually, yeah. I think that might kind of just work. So all it has to do is just barely clear the lugs on the tire and it does that. And this will look nice, which I think it'll do that when it's all said and done. It's funny, this tire makes inch and a half tube look tiny. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Call it 100 degrees. That's hot. Degrees. I just used the whole length of a piece that was, you know, basically scrap. It's not quite long enough. You can see this is this is like where I'd want it all on this end, and that end just, it needs to come back a little farther. It's just kind of off the edge of this plate, and I guess I should check the rotation of that plate, but it's pretty close to where I want it. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and bend another one because uh, that one, yeah, just, just a couple more inches of length and it would be a lot better. Um, so. works nice. And yeah, especially so for, well, and especially for angles that are too steep to cut on the chop saw. That's gonna be so sick. Yep. That's <laughs> I did super some, cool. I did some maths this morning. Gap in, in, in here, uh -huh. that's for the sprocket on the jack shaft. Oh. Coming from the engine, yeah. right? So there needs to be clearance for it. Yeah. So sprocket here, and then there'll be a little sprocket up here, going back uh, to that one back there. That's so awesome. Man, I love this finger trigger that came with the new welder. So nice, should have got one of those years ago. That is tacked, um, obviously. And you'll notice I spaced it up a little bit from there, and that's because now that I have that positioned and defined, I'm gonna make a reinforcement plate that's gonna double up the thickness of this in certain key places. So it'll go around all the bolts, all the way around here, around the center where it needs to add, you know, add to add some surface area onto this circle there. And then it'll come out where these weld on and over here, but it won't go back here because we just don't need more thickness. Anyway, it'll look cool. And then it'll be all TIG welded and shiny and pretty and super extra beef. got layer two of the hub here. Um, this one, instead of looking like a cat, looks like a little spaceship. It does. Or if you turn it upside down, like a little alien, maybe? A little fox type thing. Yeah, like a fox with a hole in its head. Or like a moose with connected antlers. <laughs> it does, look at that. Look at it as a moose, right? I bought two eyes, big antlers, and with like a oh, I see it. connecty bit. 
We'll call this the moose bracket. Yep. Kind of looks like a little cow. Oh yeah, look at that. See? See how that captures the nuts? That's nice. And then these holes here are to, to weld to the underlayer, because otherwise it wouldn't be very strong if it was only bolted to the underlayer and not the top layer, right? That's the single fanciest piece of thing I've ever made. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just the hub. When I'm building everything out of quarter inch plate and inch and a half 120 wall tubing, it's with 46 inch tires, clearly weight reduction. I think it's uh I think it's probably strong if I were to guess. You could say that. I think uh yeah, I think I think it's fairly sturdy. So that's where we get all our words from. He's the source of youth. <laughs> Will's our fountain of youth. Ah, <laughs> that's what everybody wants, a fountain of youth. Mm -hmm. Turns out you just need a little swim. A little while. Will. <laughs> oh, I'm not a fountain of youth today because I stayed up until like four o'clock in the morning fixing the Subaru. Oh yeah, that I heard you true. dropped a bolt into your transmission and had yeah. to remove your engine again. Yep. Oh no. It's starting to look like something, eh? It's really looking like something. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Got in a couple of support bars here on this end. Now I'm working on this piece, which as you can see, starts out underneath these ones and then comes through and out over them so that here, which is where its weakest point is, is right around at the, where it goes around the tire, I can now trellis in between here and make it extremely strong. Yeah. These are always very complicated little tubes to notch. They're very small and it's always the angles of the notches just get really weird sometimes. Many cuts, many angles, 
any test fits to make sure that the chain is going to clear. I was experimenting with a different idea here for this piece, um, having it have a bend in it so it has more chain clearance. Uh, but I didn't like the way it looked, and it also wasn't really necessary because, as you can see, this is, I'm quite certain, the smallest sprocket I'd ever have on there. Um, and the bigger the sprocket is, the more clearance it gets on that particular piece. And, as you can see, um, it has clearance about as much as anywhere else. words and then we just make them the only word we use. I know how to blame. You. Yeah, actually you. You're it is. Yeah, it yeah. actually is my No, fault. it's actually you. Because Will comes up with great new words and then I start using them a little bit and then you like fill in the gaps until Edwin and I and Will all say it exclusively. Yeah. So we're gonna blame you because you like- It is, I'll take some blame. You uh, oh, I don't know, you just breathe life into Will's yeah. swindly words. You take what I say and you make it into something, which it's is still nice. It's nice with you, Mike. Yes, that's the truth. I ordered up a bunch of parts for the jack shaft and bearings and stuff there, um, because uh, I'm gonna need that as we start building forward on this thing. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm gonna figure out the chain drive back here. So currently what I have is a CV cup axle stub thingy, which I need to attach to there. Um, but the sprocket needs to be about three inches out from that point. So I found this chunk of basically three inch round tube. Uh, that will be more than strong enough to hold a couple inches of chain extension. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do in terms of, in the interest of making it look clean and save, saving weight, I think I'm gonna cut this down to just this part here, turn that down to fit inside of this pipe, and then um, weld this on there so that it's an extension, and then I'll cut out a flange that'll weld on there as well um, that will bolt to a standard dirt bike sprocket pattern. So we can buy any sort of different size, like this is a 50 tooth, we could go up to, all the way up to like a 56. I think that'll do the trick wobbling by about a thousandth of an inch. Nice. Well, in case you were wondering, you can in fact cut a CV cup off with a cordless bandsaw and not even ruin the blade.
here's my sprocket hub design. Um, I made it look all fancy, kind of looks like a snowflake. money's worth out of this here dirt bike because this is still the original dirt bike that we bought when I built the Barbie Jeep like five years ago and we bought this bike for $900 and it ran not for a wow. well but it ran sad day we don't get to use the sprocket why would Honda and Kawasaki make their sprockets like one millimeter different in full pattern. I'm interested to see how this looks once it's actually on there. I mean, it just has to stick out this far. That's, you know, to clear the tire. on there pretty straight in terms of this way direction I mean it's sort of which way um, but it's a little wobulicious not really in terms of the side to side but radially it's got a little wobble to it which is why I was originally planning on drilling those holes after the fact I just know it's gonna be a huge pain to do that so I was trying to avoid it that's how it's gonna have to be. So, the good news is that I can now re-bolt pattern it. I'll just cut out another one of those without the bolt holes, and then I can just use this one, and then it'll be Honda bolt pattern. So last night I got this uh, part redone. You can see the inside now is um, machined instead of just plasma cut. And also the holes are drilled, um, you know, using the mill and this here uh, dividing head. So they're actually all a perfect circle. We have our chain drive adapter, as I'm calling it. And you can see here, uh, after I welded it all up, I trued it up as best I could by just adding weld here and there to warp it. And then I uh, turned it down um, to exactly the diameter of the inside edge of the sprocket. So it sits, it's got a little edge to ride on and that way all of this is perfectly flat so it doesn't try to twist the sprocket in any direction. To see if my math and everything works out. Let's see. Put this up against the tire, against the widest lugs. Yeah, all right. Clear's fine. 